Can you hear me? All right, excellent. <laughs> All right, today we're going to continue um, talking about tags. And we're going to start out by talking about a set of tags that are um, just generally called the basic structural tags. If you notice, if you go to um, many websites, you'll notice that most websites have in common certain sections. All right, let's, let's just pick off the top of our head a couple websites. Let's go to well, Morning Community site. We have sort of a banner on the top of the page that identifies what the site is. We have navigation to get to different points of the site. We have, <coughs> excuse me, depending on the page, sometimes we have a sidebar, which is sort of like extra stuff. If we go on one of these pages, you'll see, again, navigation, more navigation, sidebar, different sections about the different colleges that offer bachelor's and master's degree here. Let's pick a <clears throat> totally different site, Amazon. And if you look at that, we'll see some of these things exist here as well. Again, there's a banner, tells you where you are. There is a navigation. Let's go to an individual page. <clears throat> All right, same thing, banner, navigation. Different sections about it. There's a product details, customer reviews, and so on down the line. So while it won't necessarily be immediately obvious to you, Web pages have sections, and it's important for us to note that in the HTML. Why is it important for us to note that in the HTML? Again, that will become more clear over time, but it's important for a couple reasons. <clears throat> First of all, when we get into CSS, or cascading style sheets, which we probably will early next week, when we get into that, <clears throat> then It'll be important for us to note the style, uh, or um, to note the section, because we might want different sections to look a little bit different. We might want a different background color, for example, on the navigation system. So it really, our navigation section. So it really stands out. So the user, at a glance, can identify the navigation. All right. So for styling purposes and layout purposes, we want to be able to designate sections of the screen. <clears throat> we also are interested in designating sections of the screen for, again, the potential for things such as Google, uh, which crawls the internet, indexing sites. By properly identifying the different sections of your page, you're helping out search engines and other automated applications that read your page as well. So it's your job as a web developer to describe your page, to mark up your page to put the tags in that, that identifies what each little piece of content means. And one of the ways that you do that, in addition to the paragraph and the heading and so on and so forth, is by using these structural tags. Now, we'll put a list of the structural tags up and then we'll talk about them and we'll talk about how they're used. Um, first of all, there is a header tag. The header tag is not to be confused with the head tag. It serves different purpose. The head tag is where we put the title, and later on we'll put some other stuff in there too. When I put the header tag, when I talk about the header tag, I'm talking about what I call the banner. 
sort of the thing that goes across the top of the page that identifies what the page is and uh, you know what's it about. Sort of the opposite side of the header is oops, the footer. <clears throat> and the footer is something that appears at the bottom of the screen. What, what kinds of stuff do we usually put in a, a footer on the bottom of a pay, web page? Email the user, copyright those kinds of things yeah it may be information about the page who published it whatever so this information is important but um, it's typically that sort of information It's sort of uh, at the bottom of, of every page and it serves that purpose so that's the first two third one is article and an article is just what it implies it's 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 a it's a series of content it can be text or images or whatever about one specific topic. So you know it, it's obvious on a news site you know that you know that's an article. However, even on other sites you know we could have a section about um, the CISS classes, and that could be considered an article as well. Because it's, again, it's not really a news story, but it, it's an article, it's a little write-up, it's a section about um, the ISS program. So, a page can have multiple articles in it, right? For example, if I was writing a page about, um, you know, the CISS program, I could have an introductory article, I could have an article about web development, I could have an article about networking, I could have an article about mobile development and so on. Yes? All these are different from paragraphs? All these are different than paragraphs because again this is going to group stuff together. Alright? Let's say I was going to write a, uh, a, a an article about the web development curriculum. Alright? That would be a section of the page that's different than say the section of the page about networking. Alright? I In the article about web development I could have three or four paragraphs that explain what is meant by web development, what are some of the classes that you take. I could have an image of students working in the lab. I could have an image of me lecturing. I could have any other number of pieces of content and all grouped together they form an article. So yeah, it's different than a paragraph. A paragraph would be part of an article. You know, just think of it like in a magazine. If you open a magazine, an article could have you know, a dozen paragraphs and some images and a chart or whatever, and all those together are the article. Yes. So you put the tag for article. Yes. And then below that, another one for the tag. Yeah, and we'll go. We'll go over to show. We'll, we'll show an example of this. I want to just sort of introduce the tags to you first and talk about the purpose. Then we'll go over an example of it. All right. There is also a nav section. Nav is for navigation, for how to get around the website, a series of links. And you saw most every website has some form of navigation. You know, in fact, that's one of the most important things about web design is making the navigation clear so that people can find what it is they're looking for. Let me see. I hope I don't forget anything. There's an aside An aside is something that's related to the article, but it's sort of like a separate side thought. For example, let's say there was an article about um, the Cleveland Browns upcoming game. All right, you have an article and you could talk about this and that and, and predictions of the game and key matchups and so on. But then you might want to talk about, say, an injured player. All right. And it's not, you don't want to necessarily interrupt the flow of the main article, but it's sort of a related post, all right? Sort of a related uh, uh, content. And you could consider that a, like an aside, all right? In magazines, 
I should have, should have had a magazine here today, but in magazines, sometimes you'll notice that there'll be like a little uh, um, section or, or smaller article with like a border around it that's like related to the main topic, but not necessarily part of the main article. And that's called an aside, all right? So continuing our example, if we had a, um, a website about the CISS uh, program here, and I had an article about web development, I could maybe have an aside that talked about the number of job openings that there are available in this career, and, and where those jobs are, and what the average income is, and what experience you need, and so on. So I could have, it's not related exactly to the main article, but it's, it's related to it. It's not, you know, it's separated out as sort of a related thought. The other thing that you have is a section. Sometimes you're not really sure which of these it is, but you know it's a separate section. Well, you can just call it a section. So, you can say I have a section about web development or I have an article about web development. It's not important to, to sort of agonize about that decision. You know, uh, some of these, you know, some people might make a section, some people might make an article about a specific chunk of uh, content and, and they act uh, just about the same way. These are all HTML5 tags. Prior to HTML5, there was one tag that sort of served all these purposes and that was a div tag. So any of you that have done web development before, you may be familiar with div tags. These new tags are a little better than div tags because these new tags have a more specific meaning. So you can do a better job describing the content of your page. A div is simply a division or like a section of the page. Whereas they made these, these specific tags to say, well this isn't just a section, this is a navigation section. And that gives a more clear description of what the page is and allows you to more easily style the page and so on. Alright, so let's consider an example. All right, and what I'm going to do, and I'm going to sketch out the web page that we're going to create before I do it. Um, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll use some of these tags uh, in this example, and maybe we'll talk about some of the other ones. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is, I'm going to do this about CISS programs. at LC. <clears throat> and we have web development. We have mobile development. We have software development. And we have networking. And each of these sections I might have a paragraph for. All right? Or a paragraph or two about that. So there's a couple different ways that we could do this. And then at the bottom of the page, I'm going to have, you know, any questions, email me. All right? This is going to be my header tag. This is going to be my footer. I'm going to have four articles about this. And I'm also going to have a navigation to go to, to jump to those specific sections of the page. I'm not going to go to another page. I'm going to jump to a different section of my own page. That's a different sort of link. And we'll see how that works in a minute here. And it's sometimes valuable when you have a long page that people might want to jump to a section to. For example, a phone directory. If I had my organization's phone directory, I might want to click to the S's to see what John Smith's phone number was. Or if I had a list of frequently asked questions, I might want to click on question 10 and jump to the answer to that. 
All right, so let's go and let's make this page. And I'm going to save the navigation for last. So I'm going to do everything except the navigation. And then we'll come back and we'll do the navigation. So let me go and open up Notepad. And I'm going to put in the doc type, which again is not really a tag, it's, it's a, called a declaration. And that simply tells the browser what it's dealing with. Specifically, this tells the browser that it's going to be dealing with an HTML5 document. I'm going to put my main HTML tag. I'm going to put all these tags in sort of before I start, just to make sure that I don't miss any of them. We've got my head tag, an end head tag, then going to have a body tag, and an end body tag, and then finally I'm going to have my end HTML tag. Now, all the tags that I talked about today, all of them on this sheet, are all going to appear in the body section. We still only have the title that belongs in the head section. So all this stuff is going to be in the body section. All right, I'm going to go in and I'll put in, oops, in my title tag, I'll put that as the title. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a header section. And again, a header section is like the banner. It's something that should at the very least tell the user exactly what they can expect to be seeing on this page. So it gives an idea of what the what the website is about. Not so much the page, but the website. And I'm going to make, in the header, I'm going to make a H1 that says Lorraine County Community College. And I'll make a H2 which says Computer Information Systems Programs. Then I'm going to have a series of articles. about the different programs. And then I could have a series of paragraphs about them. All right. Now, since I'm a very slow typer, and it really wouldn't do anyone good to watch me type for this length of time, I'm going to use a technique that graphic designers use called Greek text. Greek text isn't really Greek. It's this sort of Latin-looking text that looks like it's in Latin. It's just used to sort of serve as a placeholder. So in other words, I might not know exactly what I want to say about the CISS programs or web development, but I want to see how the page is going to look, up, look like and line up. So I'll put some sort of dummy text in. If you go to... Google and Google Greek text... you'll see that you can get 
whatever you want. I'm going to ask for two paragraphs worth. So I'm going to go and copy this. There's my first paragraph, and here's my second paragraph. All right, so now I can do the same thing for software, mobile, and networking. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add at the very bottom a footer tag. That will contain copyright information. And notice I'm using the special character for the copyright symbol. We had talked about special characters before. The at copy semicolon will display the little C with a circle around it for a copyright symbol. All right, let's now view, go and save this and view it in the browser. So I can go up here and say File, Save. I'm going to save it on the desktop and I will call it CISS.HTML. Save it. I can now go and right mouse on it and open it with Google Chrome and there's my web page. There's a problem with this page. Anyone spot the problem? Yeah. H2. No, it really didn't hurt the page. The page still displayed. And again, we talked about this last time. What happens when you break the rules? Sort of all bets are off. It depends. And in this case, my ending tag is displayed wrong. So I made a typo with this, and it should be that. And now if we do it, it displays correctly. Now, yes? Is there any benefit to not maximizing the screen? Oh, you mean... Okay. No, no particular reason. Okay. All right. So here's our web page. Yes, go ahead. Do I have an end tag for body? Let's see. Yes, I do. Now, the copyright symbol is not correct, so let me Google that and find out what the HTML special char uh, par character is for copyright. Oh, I use the at sign, not the ampersand. There we go. So now if we go and view that, we see the little copyright symbol down there. These tags are all, oh, go ahead. There you go. I will save these up on Angel, by the way. I, I, the, the files are available on Angel. Um, but, you know, certainly if, if you want me to slow down to take notes, that's fine as well.
all of these tags that I talked about today so far, and I mean these tags, are all what are called block tags. All right? Tags in HTML are either block or inline. Block means that it appears and then you drop down to the next line for the next block tag. So for example, if we look at this, this is the header. It's a block tag. This is the first article. It's also a block tag. It starts below the previous block tag. So these stack up just like blocks on top of each other. So that's what's meant when you say it's a block tag. A link is an example of an inline tag. All right? And an inline tag is something like a link. So if I were to add a link here, let's put a link right here that says whoops a href equals http colon slash slash google dot com link to google Oh, I put that in networking. I thought I put that at the top. There's the link. That's an inline tag. In other words, the stuff doesn't come on the line below it. It just is in the middle of the paragraph. So the, all the tags that we've seen so far, with the exception of the A tag, are block tags. That is, they stock, stack on top of each other. A, li a link tag, the A tag, is an inline tag, which means that it will appear just right in the middle of the text. It won't sort of stack and, and, and have a, a blank line before and after it. Let's make a navigation on this page. And again, this page, there's only one page. So we're not going to be linking to a second page. We're going to be linking to a section within the page. So let's see how to do that. If I'm way up here and I want to get down to the networking section, I can create what's called an internal anchor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my nav section in here. And I'm going to create a link, but the href is going to look a little different. Notice instead of having the URL of a web page for this link, I simply have pound sign networking. All right? Whenever you see a pound sign as the start of the href, that means that you're going to link to a different spot, but you're going to stay on the same page. Now, how does it know what spot is a networking spot? Right now, it doesn't. We have to tell it that. And we can tell it that this way, by we can put in an ID equals networking. So when I click on this link, the browser is going to jump to this point of the page. So it's a nice way of navigating if you have a long page and you want the user to be able to just like sort of jump to the part that they're interested in. So let's save this and refresh. There's a link to networking. When I click it, I'm going to stay on the same page, but I jump so that networking is visible. 
And again, it doesn't matter how big the screen is. If I click on networking, I jump so that networking is visible. So this is a way that you can have a navigation within a page without having to go between two separate pages. Now, and in this particular example, I have um, not just one section, but I have four sections. So I shouldn't just have one link, I should have a link to each of the four sections. So I don't want just one link, I want a list of links. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is list tags. If you have a list of items, for example, in this case, a navigation, which is a list of links, you can use list tags to put them on your page. So, list tags look like this. There's a UL which indicates that I have what's called an unordered list. And we'll talk about the difference between an unordered and an ordered list. I then have a series of LI tags. And these are the list items. And these list items can be anything. They can be paragraphs, they could be images. In this case, they're a series of links. I'm going to copy this three additional times giving me a total of four of them. And then finally, here is the end of my list. Let me go and change these. All right, let me save this. And refresh. And notice now we have a bulleted list on the top for the different items, the different links that we have. We'll take a look at that again in a second. Question? Yeah. All right. We have a UL and end UL. We have an LI. We then have the link or whatever is going to be part of the list. Then we have the end li. Now, I'm going to go click on this software link and nothing happens. What's wrong? What? I didn't, well, I put the link in, what do I need to put in? The ID. I need to put the ID. I need to tell it what the software section is. So I have to I go here and I can say ID equals software. ID equals mobile. ID equals web. And now if I do this, all the links should work. There we go. It'd be nice if I could jump back to the top. All right. So I'm going to put below each section a link back up to the top. All right. Links to the top are very simple. You simply go a href equals 
pound sign. And that will take you to the top of the page. You don't even have to do anything special for this to work. Like you, with, with the other links I had to make the ID, you don't have to make the ID here. You just The pound sign will always work. So now if I was viewing networking, I could click back to the top and that would take me up to the top of the page. Question. Now, I can almost read people's minds. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's someone in the, in the web class when they see this later. I don't know. Or maybe it's one of you guys. Maybe it's someone in Ridgeville. You might say, that's all well and good, but I don't like the way those links look. I don't like the fact that there's bullet points in front of them and that they're stacked vertically. I would rather have it with no bullet points and I would rather have them stacked horizontally. Does that mean I don't use a list? And the answer to that is no. This is a list of links. Therefore, it's appropriate to use the list tag. You simply want your list to look different than, it, than the default look. And that's where we get into CSS. So our HTML describes what the content is the CSS describes what the content is going to look like. All right? There are certain defaults that are built into web browsers. By default, for most web browsers, a link is going to be blue and underlined. It just is. A, li a list is going to be stacked this way, vertically, with bullet, with the dots in front of it. Any of that you can change via your CSS and say, nope, I want it to look a different way. I don't want the bullet points. I don't want anything in front of it. And, and I don't want it stacked vertically. I want it stacked horizontally. Any of that we can change via CSS. All right? There's a different kind of list in addition to the unordered list, and that is an ordered list. Unordered lists work the same way as ordered lists or other way around. Ordered lists work the same way as unordered lists. The difference is instead of a UL tag, you use an OL tag. And then the list is going to appear as a numbered list. You use an ordered list when the sequencing of the items really matters. For example, if I had a list of the most populous states in the United States, you know, California, New York, Texas, whatever the list happens to be, it would make sense for me to use an ordered list because they're in a specific order because that's the order from most to least populated. So it would make sense for me to use an ordered list. In this case, though, when I simply have a list of links, I could have arranged them in another order. Right? I could have put software first instead of web development first. There's no reason that I put web first in particular, other than I just decided to do it that way. So that would be an example of an unordered list. All right? So an ordered list is where the sequence matters and is sort of determined, um, and you, you have to follow that sequence. An unordered list is where you, have, where you just decided to put it that way. A recipe, for example, if you're doing a recipe and you're using a ordered list, that would be appropriate, right? Because you have to do those steps in that particular order. You know, you're not going to put the eggs in the bowl and then break them, right? You're going to break them and then put them in the bowl. So the order matters for a recipe that you do things. You can't first bake it and then second add all the ingredients to the bowl. You know, none of that makes sense to do it that way. The sequence matters. So for those who use ordered lists, whereas for this list of links, yeah, I could have rearranged it and it really wouldn't matter that much. That would be a, a cause for a unordered list as I did here. Questions on this? All right. Um, 
let's see. Things that I didn't include in here is I didn't include a section. Um, I could have included a section. I, all these articles I could have made a section and it really wouldn't matter. And I didn't do an aside, but an aside would be something like I mentioned before where I said something like, Here are our employment statistics. For web developers. Where we'll really start to see the benefit of this is when we get into CSS, because then we can make asides look a little different than a regular article, because they are a little different. There's sort of like extra information that you could skip if you want to, but is there if, if you're interested. Yes? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, again, that's a case of where the, the white space doesn't matter. You lay it out in a way that's more readable for you. I just left it like that because when I pasted it, that's how it looked. But if I was actually typing in a paragraph, I probably would type it more like this, whereas it would be readable and I wouldn't have to sc side scroll to see it. There's a couple other links that, uh, that we're going to cover. Um, today. We should be able to get these in today. One is an email link. It's nice that if you can click on a link that it takes you right to the user's email program. And I could make, for example, my name that would send me to an email program by doing something like this. A href equals, and again, instead of having a web address, or a pound sign, I'll say mail to colon Mike M. Zellers at Lorraine CCC.edu. Now I won't be able to demonstrate this because on this machine, email's not set up, but we can still see sort of how it looks. If I go and save that, and refresh. Notice there's my aside that I added a minute ago. But if I click that, Outlook isn't set up, but you see what it's doing there is it's firing up Outlook so that if Outlook was, was set up, it would already populate an email with my address in it. All right. The other thing that you might want to do is link to another one of your pages. So let's review the kinds of links we've had so far. We've had a link to another page. That's where you do a href equals and then you have the full URL. HTTP colon slash slash and so on. We've linked to a section of our page and we've done that by saying a href equals pounds sign something where we've had, uh, where we put in an ID and that's a section of the page that we're going to link to. We've seen an email link where if you click on that, the client's email software is initiated and an email can be sent. The last thing we're going to do is look at what if I had a page, what if I developed a second page that, um, I wanted to link to that I wrote that isn't like someone else's page. So let's do, let's go and edit this.
And I'll put another paragraph down here that says most of the web development classes are taught by Mike Zellers. And let's say I want to have a page, a link to my biography. So I could say a href equals, and then I would put the name of the web page that I have created. I'm going to make sure to start, I'm going to make sure it's in the same folder as the other one. So if this page is on the desktop, I'm going to put the new page on the desktop as well. All right. Um, later on we'll talk about mixing folders and putting them on different things. But notice that I'm not going to have the HTTP in front of it. I'm just going to have the name of the page. I'm going to go and copy this page in the interest of time. I'm going to call up Mike. Then I'm going to edit it. I didn't want to do that. And then I'm going to have a link back to the CISS page. So now if I go and save this, I can open this guy up. I could click on that. It takes me to my page. I could click on that, it takes me back to that. So we've seen four different kinds of links. We've seen a link to someone else's page, which is done with a href equals, and then the full address of that page, starting with HTTP, then the link text and the end tag. We've seen a link within a section of the page by saying href pound sign something, where that pound sign is the ID. We've seen an email link. And now we've seen where we're linking to one of our pages as opposed to someone else's pages, where we just put the name of the page and we don't need the HTTP and so on. Any questions at this point? Our agenda for next week will be first of all to see if there's any questions about this and maybe spend a few minutes reviewing this. We will then get on the image tag. We will then get on CSS because 
We don't all want our pages to look exactly the same. We want to have, we want to be able to use things such as color and font to sort of create a mood on our website and also to sort of give the user some visual hints about what's important on the page and so on. So next week, first images, then CSS. All right, any questions? We okay in Ridgeville? All right. We'll see you next week then.